So I'm back with the next step. I've got my uh, speed paints to hand. Palette bone, magic blue, dark wood, plasmatic bolt, runic grey, hardened leather. And it's just a case of apply them in the appropriate places. Uh, I'm going to start with the magic blue, which is what I'm using for the kind of the specially we special weapons on my night haunts. In this case, the axe. With the executioner being fairly rough and ready with it because the nice thing about them is if i apply them when they're all wet still i can get them to mix up deliberately being a bit rough and ready and all over the place with it i'm really not that concerned about this one being anywhere near perfect in fact it might actually benefit more from it Now intentionally, for exactly the same reason, I'm going to get my plasmatic bolt, which is going to go on all of the frame, on all of the spirit bits. And the nice thing about this is then they can merge a bit and merge a bit and deliberately run into each other the effects it's all fairly quick and easy Nothing particularly fancy here. Slightly small brush. One of the great things about the various contrast style paints is that they can, you can wet blend them really, really well. And that gives you some really nice effects. So I'll put one side and let it dry for a bit while I go on to some of the other more important colours. Um, now I've decided on these guys I'm going to make for a coppery effect on the bells. So I'm going to start with a coat of hardened leather. It's a nice sort of light brown, decent start for a copper effect. Um, See, so I'll end up getting covered in uh, dirty dust verdigris effect. So there won't be much of the copper effect. The orangey look showing through, if anything, when I'm done with it. That's all intentional. And I've got no problem with that. So it's all fairly quick. Nice about all these sorts of effects is they are, like I said, really, you can do them really quick. If you haven't tried out contrast or speed paints. They are a wonderful tool for the hobby. And because the nature, you can be fairly quick. And not have to worry too much about them in terms of taking too much care. So all in there. Make sure I get the other bells as well.
Done. Uh, next stop, I will do the bone. Which is pallid bone. So any skull. Hands, arms, etc. Well, this takes almost no time at all. As long as you're vaguely careful with nice amount of speed paints as well because they reactivate underwater with water. If you make a mistake, it's very quick and easy to. Correct. And clean up. Even the areas that are almost, that are still almost black, I'll go over because it's adding that tonal variation. This one I don't have to paint the face, it's just the arms. So you get a nice little mixing. On the axe. Um, I like runic grey for more traditional metal. Iron areas. Not too many on these ones. Things like chains, uh, a bit of chain mail. Just adding again a little bit of, as you see, went over a bit. Button brush, clean it up. Dead quick. It's not doing too much on these. It's not an overbearing colour, it's quite a subtle colour. Uh, for the areas that I'm doing it on, probably would benefit from a couple more coats, but I'm doing it. It's gonna get so heavily covered in rust that it's not not really gonna matter much. But I'm done. Just give me a bit of tonal variation now. Chains, chain mail, just fairly rough and ready, not worried too much about being too neat at this stage. A lot of any errors tend to get covered up in some of the next stages. Uh, realize some of it's actually spilt down on him. Just take my brush because it all reactivates. Wash it down and it'll be fine. Go. Good as new. And the only bit left to do is the dark wood. All the only bits. So I'm using for for the handles of the various weapons.
more models I have going on the go at once, the more uh, efficient this step is. With only three uh, stages aren't drying between me going back onto the same model again. But if I was doing eight to ten models, by the time I get around to doing the next colour on the next model, the previous colour would, would be more than dry enough for me to go over with it. Make sure I've got a nice even covering the whole way through. The dark wood will get toned down fairly heavy, fairly heavily. I am considering a lighter colour just because uh, the enamel wash makes it look almost well, makes it look super dark regardless. But my uh, Army Painter Speed Paint Mega Set came with missing one of the greens and a double pot of uh, two pots of the dark wood. So I figured I might as well keep using lots of that. Did just notice a spot I'd missed. Darkwood on his axe. Speed paints work beautifully over any sort of the sort of dry brushing. Zenithals, basically similar as you would as contrast would work well. Anything contrast work well over, the speed paints work well over too, from my experience. And yes, they reactivate, but I will, um, my next step after them will normally be a varnish, so it will be fine. And one more step I want to do, a little spot colour. I thought about earlier. Where's my high toilet purple? The uh, Grave Ghost Reapers, I think they're called. I can never remember names. So many weird names in the in the Night Haunt army. Um, I think the Green Grave Ghost Reapers. They've got these little crests uh, on their on their foreheads and I've just been doing those in like purples or yellows just to make just to give a bit of visual interest to the model. Nothing too complicated. A bit purple. paint's done. Next up will be uh, gloss varnishing, which you don't need to see, uh, and I will come back when I get on to doing the next fun part. Ta-ta for now.